Greetings all, and thank you so much for listening in on my talk, and a huge thank you to conference organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk to you about Ladies of Landsat. My name is Kate Fickus, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow at USGS Eros, which is where the Landsat program is housed, and UC Santa Barbara's Climate Hazard Center, and I'm lucky enough to be stationed here on the gorgeous Southern California coast here in Santa Barbara. I'm also the founder and co-director of an organization called Ladies of Landsat, and I'm here today to talk about how we've tried to open up diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, and accessibility in the field of Earth observation. I'll introduce myself a bit and then give you a brief history and introduction to how Ladies of Landsat got started and what we look like today, almost four years later. Our mission statement is broad and I'll spend the rest of my time talking about how it guides our decisions and what we choose to take on in Ladies of Landsat. I'm going to spend just a really small bit of time talking about my path to Ladies of Landsat here because later on in my talk, I pitched storytelling as an essential part of increasing representation in STEM. So this is me on the live NASA broadcast for the recent Landsat 9 launch, which was a completely surreal experience compared to where all of this got started. I grew up in Oregon on the west coast of the United States and spent most of my time outside in forests and wetlands and rivers. I loved science, but my formative years were spent when environmentalism just began to be increasingly politicized, and I thought I wanted to be a lawyer on the front lines of environmental law. I started at University of California, Berkeley in pre-law and worked at an international environmental law firm for a couple of years. I burned out on that trajectory pretty quickly, and I really honestly missed being outside. So I hopped back up to Oregon and got back on an ecology track and started working in a research lab that tracked endangered turtles throughout the forest. I was also able to spend a field season tracking wolves in Yellowstone and looking at their, how their reintroduction affected the surrounding ecosystem. After a while, as a field ecologist, I got really frustrated with how little folks were paying attention to the plight of single species like my turtles and my wolves. And I wanted to start researching the landscape with a focus on conservation. So I did both my master's and my PhD with Warren Cohen at Oregon State University using Landsat time series to look at wetland change over time. I then jumped to University of Massachusetts Amherst in 2018 as a postdoctoral scholar to do the same thing but for salt marsh ecosystem wetlands um, on the east coast. And this time I was also adding drones into the mix in a project funded by the US Environmental Protection Agency. During this time, I also got hooked up with Utah's Department of Environmental Quality and helped them begin to map harmful algal blooms from space, which plagued most of their recreational waters. This year, I was awarded the USGS Mendenhall Fellowship to work at USGS Eros, uh, but actually get to study with climate scientists here in San Santa Barbara. Right now, my focus is on Landsat land use, land cover change, and how that interacts with climate and climate change. And I've actually only been here for about 45 days. So that's me, but let me shift back to Ladies of Landsat. I breezed over it a bit in my introduction, but I had a pretty rough time during my PhD. I only had one other woman in my lab group, and my project was really different than everyone else's. I traveled around the world and nationally and locally and never really saw or met any other women in my space and earth observation. I felt so lonely and just kept asking, where are all the women? So the term ladies of Landsat first came out of my mouth during a conference in Chile where my lab mate Jody Vogler and I were hyping each other up before our presentations. We were both really nervous and feeling a heavy dose of imposter syndrome, so I said to Jody, there's no reason to be nervous. You're a lady of Landsat. And we both use that term for the remainder of the conference to feel a sense of belonging and confidence and joy. And it really worked. It wasn't until two years later that I opened the Ladies of Landsat Twitter account. The night before it went live to the public, I was sitting in a bar in Sioux Falls, South Dakota after a Landsat science team meeting, having a really hard time. I had just been hit by a professional and personal heartbreak and I was on the verge of breaking down. My advisor took me aside and asked me what was wrong. So I poured my heart out to him and at the end of all of it, he said, Kate, you can do this. You are so special, I believe in you. And always remember, you're a lady of Landsat. 
And I thought, wow, everyone needs to hear this. And women are especially vulnerable to never receiving this form of support. The Twitter account went live the next day and a community started to form. It wasn't until I met my now co-director Morgan Crowley in Ireland at a Google Earth Engine conference that Ladies of Landsat really began to take off. She shared my vision for the community and the rest is history. Morgan and I by no means do this alone. Tremendous support is shared with our lead organizers and many others who are not pictured or mentioned here. We have a Ladies of Landsat uh, community across six continents helping us out, but not everyone has the capacity or time to volunteer and many folks simply network or share resources with us. We're still informal as a group because that allows everyone to wade in and out of how much they can contribute without feeling a sense of obligation or guilt. Right now, it's just a really supportive space where anyone is welcome to help, but no one has to. We often get the question, how do I become a Lady of Landsat? And the answer is, if you want to be one, you already are. We're an all-inclusive space and all are welcome. So there's a lot of tokenism that goes in for women in STEM. So we try to use our really simple mission statement to guide our values and decision making. Simply, we hope to make the field of Earth observation more equitable, inclusive, and accessible for underrepresented scientists. We do this through a two-tiered approach. First, there's a bottom-up amplification and representation of female and underrepresented voices in Earth observation. And second, we have a call for action and awareness from the top down by asking those in and with power to become active allies and change the landscape from the inside. I say amplification and representation is a bottom-up approach because it's really coming from the foundation of a community trying to make sure that all voices and perspectives are present in Earth observation. I promise you, adding diversity to Earth observation projects may make things more complicated, but it adds tremendous value. We have several of these approaches. The first is simply community building. We've grown to almost 8,000 members on Twitter in less than four years, building an international community with a huge reach. And we've been able to augment that reach with both in-person and virtual events. And I want to say that I've always held the personal value of community over competition, and we translated that into our Ladies of Landsat value system as well. A good example is a spin-off group from Ladies of Landsat, Sisters of SAR. We work together behind the scenes and in front to celebrate each other's achievements rather than feel threatened by each other's successes. And again, I promise you, this is the path towards equity, inclusion, and accessibility over competing with one another. Often, folks will say they only know research from a handful of women in remote sensing. So to get towards increasing representation, we started a weekly series on Monday mornings called Manuscript Monday, where we highlight cutting edge research in the field of remote sensing from around the world. Here, we aim to reduce the proven citation gap between genders and encourage folks to feel proud of their achievements, including with self-nominations. We've even put together all our features on GitHub, so there's absolutely no excuse not to cite underrepresented scientists in your Earth observation work. Towards amplification and representation, we've also used the power of storytelling. Working with USGS, we conduct interviews with women and create animated videos based on their stories. This effort has been a huge success for many reasons. Sharing our stories normalizes taking different paths to get to where we are today. And then diversity in stories creates a greater sense of community because we don't all have the same story, but we all do have our own story. Next, it inspires new groups to explore Earth observation that may not have otherwise thought they fit in. And then lastly, it directly increases representation and widens the view of what an Earth observation user looks like. We have several more of these interviews and animated videos lined up, and I'm hoping the community will respond really well. Along the same lines, we've just started Ladies of Landsat trading cards. 
We put out a call for anyone who was interested in sharing their research during the Landsat 9 launch events to fill out a form, and we created cards based on, off of their information. I hauled these cards around in my pack and put them on tables during different launch events. I could not overstate how much folks loved seeing these cards. So many people got pen and paper out to take down information so they could reach out to new ladies of Landsat. This is now going to be an ongoing series, so we're really excited that we'll be able to be hauling these trading cards around uh, to any Ladies of Lanza event or any conferences that any of us are able to attend going forward. Lastly, in terms of representation, support systems are so important. Women and underrepresented scientists face bias, discrimination, and harassment on a daily basis, and we so often doubt ourselves in our paths. So, for example, we have a private vent channel on our Ladies of Landsat Slack, and it's truly used every day to support each other. For anyone who's interested in supporting the underrepresented scientists in their organization, I highly encourage you to start a safe space like this where women and underrepresented scientists can see what a scientist looks like and the diversity of what that looks like. And I'll touch on having a safe space and opening up the curtains um, in just a second. Next, I'll shift to a call for action and awareness from the top down and asking those in and with power to change the landscape. Right now, there's a trajectory towards more women and underrepresented scientists entering into Earth observation, but what we're seeing is that they tend to still be excluded from leadership roles. In a study done with Karen Joyce, Catherine Nakalembe, Christina Gomez, Gopika Shiresh, Megan Halibisky, Michelle Kalmandine, and Morgan Crowley, we surveyed the top 30 remote sensing and geoscience journals to see what their gender and geographic dynamic was on their editorial boards. The results weren't great. As you can see, three journals had zero women on their editorial boards, with the majority of journals having between 10 and 24% women. And then none of these journals had greater than 40% women. In the same vein, there exists a huge bias towards the global north. You have to remember, these are the folks making the decisions on who does and does not get published. And this type of bias is insidious in limiting diversity and equity in Earth observation. It needs to be stopped. Ladies of Landsat tries to use our power and privilege to bring awareness to this problem so that as many people as possible can see behind the curtain and normalize talking about the different biases that exist and make sure that they know they're not alone and that they are not the problem. So this is a screenshot from our panel at the USGS National Imagery Summit earlier this year. We talked about sexual harassment, parenthood, imposter syndrome, and discrimination from panelists of different career stages and geographic locations. The comments we got back from the audience validated that not enough of these conversations are happening and how important it is for those of us who have the ability to share our stories and experiences without fear of consequences do so, so that others don't feel as lonely. So I wanna open up and be a little vulnerable with you here. Beyond just feeling lonely and like an imposter during my PhD, hard things continue to happen to me because I'm a woman. I've been sexually assaulted by a keynote speaker at a large conference, told that I better have children soon before my parts stop working, told that I better make sure I publish my paper before I get pregnant, had my ideas stolen by men I trusted above me, and numerous other accounts. And for me, no one else had ever shared similar stories with me until I opened up about mine. And now I make it my personal responsibility and thusly the responsibility of Ladies of Landsat to make sure these acts of discrimination don't make anyone else feel unworthy or alone. And that's how I try to use my power as an active ally to, for those who might need it. So you're a white man and you're excited about being an active ally and you want to know where to start. We see two broad ways to help women and underrepresented scientists in this space. The biggest but most challenging task is to help change the system that was built upon patriarchal values. Opportunity is the currency of privilege and power. So you have to ask yourself the question, do you have the ability to create opportunity? If you do, ask who's in the room 
recognize when thing looks, things look imbalanced, and then take action to create opportunities for those who may not otherwise be seen. And you have to remember that learning isn't easy and all of this is not an easy task because if you're really committed to being an active ally, this often means taking away opportunities from not only your friends, but yourself. Another way to help is to help folks within the system because we aren't going to bring down the patriarchy overnight. This used to look like workshops on how to dress for success, which really meant things like how to dress like a man or how to talk like a man or how to interview like a man. But nowadays, this looks more like helping someone navigate, for example, a journal's editorial board that's mostly white and male if an author is female and from a developing country. Use your power and privilege for good. Have questions about how to be an active ally or want to help us organize Ladies of Landsat? Please don't hesitate to reach, reach out. And if you want some sweet Ladies of Landsat merch, I've also included a link here for that as well. We've written many blog posts and done several podcasts. You can Google us or find those on our Twitter page. We're working on getting a single web page done, uh, likely be on GitHub, so that you can find all of this information in one single space. I want to say thank you again for listening and a huge thank you to conference organizers for giving me and Ladies of Landsat this opportunity. From crying into my beer in Sioux Falls, South Dakota the night before Ladies of Landsat went live, to having the Secretary of the Department of Interior of the United States, that's the third down from the President, recognizing Ladies of Landsat, I'm in awe of this community and the support it's created. Thank you so much.